My name's Surreal. I'm a visual multimedia artist. I'm also a musician, one half of Jagoff, um, an artist advocate. We run the site, therecordindustry.com, which is now going into its second decade. I'm Mofo, AKA Trench Digger. I'm the other half of Jagoff. Um, I'm also a musician, video artist, independent artist, advocate, activist. We were introduced to our friend Hank Parrott almost two years ago uh, to take part in a study on the effects of globalization on artists in the city of Chicago. Basically what we were discussing were ways to try to keep our um, talent in the city from moving off to other cities that were more welcoming to their artists. Now, ironically enough, the whole time that this is going on and that we're talking to Hank about this, we learn about the um, promoter's ordinance that the city is trying to pass. Basically what the city of Chicago wants is all promoters in the city to be licensed. It would cost you between $500 and $2,000 for this privilege. It's discretionary as to whether you get it or not, so you have to submit the fingerprinting and a background check. Once you jump through those hurdles, you have to carry $300,000 worth of insurance and notify the chief of police seven days prior to the, having your event. The city of Chicago should be supporting and promoting its smaller venues and lesser known artists instead of trying to pass laws that would hinder artists' ability to contribute to the culture of this great city. I just think that it's a big bunch of bullshit because you know, it, it's some more government regulation of some more of fun. Like, why are you always trying to regulate my fun? You know, like, it's not as if passing out flyers or telling people about an event is going to lead to the downfall of society. What the fuck do you need to step into it and get and regulate it for? You know? It's like, if you got to get, like, a whatever it is, a hundred thousand, two hundred, three hundred, four hundred thousand dollar insurance policy and deal with all the other shit, like, Man, it just, it cuts out the drive of kids. And you gotta like, really try to encourage kids to be proactive. And this is some like, you know, chops them right off of the knees. No, sir. Beat it. Kills Andy music. Kills Andy music. Now I gotta pee. Why the Chicago's event promoter's ordinance should be rejected. The proposed ordinance does not address any public need, often justified as a response to the February 17, 2003 stampede in the E2 nightclub which killed 21 people. The proposed ordinance does not address the problems that led to that tragedy. Too many people, 1,100, were in a venue that could safely accommodate only 300. The city had not acted on known building and fire code violations, and the venue security staff did not respond appropriately. Let them make their couple of bucks. They're not making billions of dollars. You want billions of dollars? 
have your fucking Olympics. You're not gonna be any independent musicians at the fucking Olympics. But meanwhile, people who are here at the Olympics want to see what Chicago's about. Let us do our shit. Let's ball. The proposed ordinance targets event promoters rather than venue owners. Although circumstances leading to the E2 tragedy were within control of the venue manager and not third party promoters. Venue owners, not third party promoters, are in a position to control everything that might jeopardize the health or safety of fans. My name is Jim DeRogatis, I'm the pop music critic at the Chicago Sun-Times, as well as a musician. I often, uh, I don't usually do interviews about that, about playing music. I kind of keep separation of church and state. You know, I mean, for all I know, Rick Tellender, sometimes ace sports uh, columnist, he plays softball on Sundays, plays touch football maybe. He doesn't write about that. I don't write about playing music. But I've played music since I was 15. Uh, I've been in, in a 25, 30 bands since I was 15. I'm 44 now. I've played music my whole life. Some people go bowling, I play music. And it's fun. I think it makes me a better critic. It doesn't make me an easier critic. It makes me a harsher critic in some ways. If you don't have something to say with your music, what's the point of doing it? That's kind of my, my routine. But uh, it's fun. I do it because I enjoy it. And it also gives me a side of the community that I don't know if I'd just see if I was a, only a writer. Um, Chicago is the most vibrant music community in America. I've lived in and been a journalist in Minneapolis. I've lived in and was born and raised in, uh, in Jersey City and Hoboken, just across the river from New York City. Played in bands in both of those other cities. Nothing in the world. I've toured the world. I've toured with bands. I've made records. I've toured the U.S. in a 22 city tour when I was 22 years old. I've never seen any city, any community like Chicago. The fact, this is me in my journalist hat now, the fact that Chicago does not recognize what this city is, to me is unconscionable. And I mean, I can tell you about the music scene in Berlin, in Hamburg, in Vienna, in, in Bern, Switzerland, in Minneapolis, in Chicago, in, in Portland, in, uh, you name it, and, and nothing beats the sense of community in Chicago. We have some of the greatest independent labels in the world in Chicago. We have some of the best rock clubs in Chicago. We have some of the greatest record stores. And yet the city has, has had nothing short of a full-on war on the music community in this city for the entire time I've been here as a reporter. And I came in the early 90s, 91. Uh, whether you want to talk about the destruction of Maxwell Street as a vital institution, as an institution that is, is as sacred and as historic as Beale Street in New Orleans, Orleans, which is lauded and celebrated. Sixth Street in Austin, Texas, which is lauded and celebrated. Maxwell Street in Chicago, it was torn down. It's gone. There's a 7-Eleven where these bands used to play. And I'm talking about Muddy Waters and Howlin' Wolf. It's a tragedy, and now I think that in the wake of E2, and what happened there was a disaster, but a preventable disaster. There were 20 laws on the books that the fire department, the building department, and the police department could have enforced, but did not. And as a result, those people died. Same thing happened in Rhode Island. This is not endemic to live music or to dance music, and yet you have well-intentioned politicians seeking to shut down a vibrant community. My biggest problem is if a network news anchor went on TV and said, the Palestinians love the Israelis. He would be drummed out of the business. He does not know what he's talking about, okay? And yet, in the city of Chicago, you can assault culture, and you can say, we have to make our clubs safe, they're not safe. And you don't know what you're talking about. You don't know the difference between a show at the Double Door, where my band just played. Maybe it was a benefit. Maybe some musician broke his or her leg, and he or she has no health insurance, and 15 bands play at night. Well, the promoter's ordinance that's proposed, that this film is about, would make that illegal to hold a benefit for those people. Maybe it's a big dance party celebrating the house music legacy of this city. 
maybe it's a Latin music concert celebrating someone who's never performed here from South America who's coming here. You know, in the wake of E2, the city cultural department flew up some Brazilian musicians who were playing at Martyrs, and the city building department, fire department, police department, shut the show down. 